cookie. Do you like it wide or ultra wide? <laughs> What's good with it? It's your Ken Folk Dookie back again with Bang. Budget and new gear reviews to help you get the best bang for your tech dollars. And I'm here with what I think is got to be the best cheap. You know I like to bring y'all some cheap stuff here and get the best bang for your bucks. The best cheap ultra wide on the market. I'm here with the 29WK600-W. I don't remember it all by, so you know, that's what I'm gonna do. Now, shout out to my folks of the ultra wide master race. I have been eyeing these things for a while and I got a chance to check this one out for a short time only. Now I'm gonna let you know at the end what I think and if you should pick this up or not. But I know y'all wanna get right into it, so let's just jump into the specs and see what's good. We have a 29 inch ultra wide IPS monitor with a 21 by nine aspect ratio at 2560 by 1080p. On the back, we have all the inputs, one DPI, two HDMI, one audio out and PowerPoint. Funny story, for the first day or so, I had no idea how to access the menu as there are no visible buttons or remote included in the box. Eventually, I noticed this small joystick that gives you a variety of controls. The stand is pretty stable. If you're not going to use a Visa mount arm, which it is compatible with, then make sure you have the space on your desk for the length of the base. Also, there are no tilt or rising features on the stand, so unless you have a shelf riser like this, you'll have to deal with the height you get. Now having more screen real estate for somebody like me who loves to multitask is a must. Being able to work on a podcast while keeping up a Twitter stream or even edit a video while watching some of my favorite YouTube shows definitely makes the ultra wide lifestyle a plus. But when you really want to enjoy some quality 21 by nine entertainment, it takes the experience to a whole nother level. I always thought the word immersive was a buzzword used to sell stuff, but when you get a game at full ultra wide it draws you in even more but the biggest gaming feature upgrade on this monitor for me is jumping up to 75 hertz i can't fully express in this video how smooth and fast it is but 75 hertz with free sync and my rx 580 at 1080p just flies in games you wouldn't think that small of a jump would be that noticeable but it really is i don't think i could game at standard 60 fps again now viewing content on this monitor is a pretty good experience. It has a variety of brightness modes that let you tailor it to the content you're watching. As far as editing and content creating, it covers 99% of the sRGB color gamut. Now you've heard me say it also has HDR10 support. And there are a number of videos that talk about how HDR on Windows 10 just isn't fully baked. In gaming, I only noticed HDR support while playing Madden, but I really couldn't tell much of a difference. Now with movies that have HDR support, turning it on in Windows will affect everything, but in full screen, the movies look much better. Here they are side by side. The colors are more vibrant and the overall scene is brighter, but it looks natural. Still though, 99% of my usage with this monitor is in HDR. It's cool that it's there, but it's no big deal for me. Now I would never suggest anyone to use their monitor for audio. But if you do, the sound is capable, I guess. At full volume, it gets loud enough for someone sitting directly in front of it, but the quality leaves a lot to be desired. Here's a quick sound sample. Also shout out to Ryan Little for the amazing production. Now take something as simple as these cheap Mixiter desktop speakers I reviewed a while back and notice the difference. If you pick up this monitor, I would definitely pick up some speakers to go along with it.
in conclusion, I definitely think this is a pretty good monitor to get started, especially if you're looking to jump into the ultra wide lifestyle. Now, honestly, the thing that bothers me the most about this monitor is the size. I think a 34 inch would be my go-to starting point for ultra wide unit. Now I'm used to two bigger monitors and having full 1080p amongst two monitors definitely suits my lifestyle much better. So I believe with a much larger version of this monitor, I'll be good to go. But honestly, it still is a great monitor just to get jumping into. Playing games on it is lovely. I've been going hard in the new Black Ops 4 and it's just a fun experience all the way around. What I need y'all to do is let me know down in the comments what monitor you're currently using and if you're interested in jumping into the ultra wide lifestyle. <sighs> I think I need some suggestions on monitors I should check out. So if you got any ideas, let me know down there as well. I'm gonna get up out of here. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. It's your kid, Folk Dookie. Never forget to holla at your boy. I mean, when wide ain't enough, sometimes we gotta go. <laughs> if I don't make it through this, it's Seahova's fault. Y'all need to leave a comment down below about saying what's up to Seahova in the building. She usually ain't around when I'm recording. All right.